Hey, Kelly, how are you? I'm great, Bo. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Have you heard about Anchor? You mean that big, heavy thing that you throw off the side of a boat? No, silly. The podcast app that helps you distribute your podcast episodes to a bunch of major websites. Wow, that's super cool. Yeah, it's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Ooh, I love less work. That sounds fantastic. And you can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Ooh, I also love to make money. Yeah, so just download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Do it. Do it. Precisely. Two best buds. Precisely. Drinking beer and talking about stuff. Precisely. Bo and Tony, precisely, playing and reviewing games, precisely. How's it going, everyone? This is Precisely Podcast, episode 24. I am your host, Bo, and with me, as always, the coolest collected dude I know, Tony. And we are with a very special guest, Kelly, a.k.a. Highway to Cal. Hello. Holy shit, I got it right. You did. I cannot believe that. On the last podcast, I mentioned your name because I was talking about Klonoa, and I definitely said Highway Tokal. But as you yeah, should. As I should, yeah. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Tony? I'm doing very well. Thank <laughs> you for the nice compliments, by the way. Believe me, I had to erase a bunch of ones that I had first. <laughs> 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 I don't even want to mention them. Okay. I was like, they're very like... I don't know, a little assholey, and I was like, "No, Tony doesn't deserve that. He does such a good job on this podcast, and with the editing and everything." So, yeah, I was, it was going to be like uh, the man that's always here that I always try to get rid of, but he's stuck like a fly on flypaper. <laughs> but yeah, it just didn't sound good. Didn't roll off the tongue, right? Yeah, yeah. So, how is everyone? Good, man. Still good. All right. Sorry that I'm asking the same questions. <laughs> it's all right. It's the summer solstice. And right. I think everyone's in a good mood today. Yeah. It is. It is summer, isn't it? Mm-hmm. First yeah, day of first summer. First day. And so. it's actually a beautiful day for once in central Pennsylvania. Yeah. Not much rain today. Super cool, too. Like, it's been hot and humid the past days this week. Nice sun with a little bit of a breeze. I'm cracking my beer, too. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Ooh. Uh, Fuck. For those at home, Bo just, Bo's beer. Can you grab me beer just exploded. I got paper towers right next to you. Thank God. Jesus Christ. Yeah, anyway, we have these beers from Mother Earth Brewing Co. We're Fuck all trying. Mother Earth Brewing Company. It just spilled all over my couch and my pants. We have three different beers, and <laughs> we're all going to try a different one. <laughs> While while Bo cleans himself up, yes. I'll start off because yep. um, I already started drinking mine. Uh, mine is Call Me Ginger, which is a blonde ale brewed with ginger and lemon. Um, and I was saying it probably could stand to use a little bit more ginger for my taste. It's like almost a ginger beer, like a straight ginger beer, but it just has a little bit of... I guess hop and lemon, but I just kind of wanted more ginger. Yeah. I don't know. And then I, I, was, I love ginger. I yeah, I was talking about the, the Krabbies. That's my favorite ginger beer. So it got me thinking about that. But this is a, yeah, a nice Krabbies little substitute. Is, is way better than this. Yeah, but this is a good, definitely not straight ginger beer, but just a little little hint of it to, to wet your whistle. All right. Mostly everything's cleaned up. Can you hand me that spray next to you, Kelly, as well? I don't want the couch to be sticky. How's your beer, Tony? I'm not impressed at all. In fact, I probably wouldn't drink it again. Do you want to switch beers? Sure. To my foamy beer? <laughs> I'm not even sure what I have because it just foamed everywhere. Oh, great. That sounds great. That's better than burping. What are you drinking on now? Uh, Boo Koo, an IPA. And I haven't tried it yet. And I have, is it Resonator? No, it's Say When India Pale Ale. Tasty notes of gooseberry pie, passion fruit, morango, and tea leaf. That morango? Morangue. 
Meringue? G U E. What? What do you say? Look at this. Meringue? What is this? Oh my god, I'm spelling on myself again. Meringue. Meringue. Like that like is not just meringue. L- like lemon meringue pie. No way. It's spelled that way. Yeah. Okay. Look it up. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Kelly teaches, so. I'm not a teacher. No. Oh. Well. <laughs> You work at schools, right? I do. All right. <laughs> that makes you a teacher, I think. Like, I don't I know. <laughs> you help kids. Uh, yeah. Let me try it. I think this beer tastes like soapy, bitter water, honestly, too. Damn. But I'll drink it. Um, It's it's okay. Like, this one's okay. Say one India pale ale. I don't know if I would say one. I would just be like, give me a sample. And then be like, no, give me something else. Yeah. It's not the best. But, hey, guess what? We went to Westies again, and I got these six packs for four ninety nine. So that's all that matters. And we're saving you guys the hassle of buying not the best beer. And it could be expired, and that's why, you know, we got it on sale. So who cares? Either way, beer is beer, and we like beer. The expiration date on mine is eleven nine eighteen. That's why. That's why. That is probably <laughs> why. But it's not that bad for being expired. So I had a really weird dream last night. I dreamt that I was at my house with my wife. And you know like what a control burn is like in a forest yeah. where they like burn trees, like get rid of stuff or whatever. Yep. So we knew that this control burn was happening, but we forgot when it was happening until it started happening. And it was happening inside of our house, which we were cool with. We were like trying to get rid of bugs or something in our house. But uh, the floor started heating up underneath our feet. And I was like, oh my gosh, the control burn's happening right now. They started it in the basement. Like, we need to get the animals out. So we start rushing to get the animals out. And my wife's like, well, we got to feed the cats. And uh, and she starts feeding them inside of a crate inside the house. I'm like, babe, just feed them outside. Bring the crate outside. Like, the burn's happening. And she's like, no, they're only used to the house. We got to feed them inside. I'm like, well, if you're doing that, I'm going to save all the kiosks inside. So I start, like, bringing them downstairs and, like, all the expensive video games that I have. Because, like, in my head I was like, well, with this control burn – like, everything will be here minus, like, plastic stuff. Like, I just got to save the plastic stuff because that won't last. So, like, I'm rushing to get all this stuff out while my feet are, like, on fire. Like, I have no idea what was going on in real life. But it was the weirdest, like, surreal dream where it was very vivid. Like, I woke up and started writing notes about it just to remember to talk about later because I'm like, why did this happen? Usually I remember dreams – because of like playing a video game or like watching a movie, but nothing sparked this whole dream that was happening. But it was so weird. I was like, oh yeah, control burn starts in the basement, goes through the house, and everything's going to be on fire essentially. But it will be cool because it's controlled. So basically, you're like the picture of that dog that says everything is fine and the whole house is on fire around him. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. That was your dream. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that could definitely be scary. Yeah, it was, but, like, we were also very cool, calm, and collected in the dream. But then it ended, and I was like, all right, whatever. Kudos to Dream You for pulling the kiosks out by yourself. Honestly, it might have been, like, the dream I just came from a shitty night that I had last night because after cooking dinner, I was putting it away. I downloaded the new... uh, harry potter game on the iphone and i'm like trying to do that while putting food away and my phone falls on the ground on the kitchen tiles and shatters and i'm like god damn it like just started like cursing up a storm I'm like ah! and my wife's like what's the matter i'm like my phone finally shattered which like inevitably we knew it was going to happen because i've been keeping the case off of it mainly because it wasn't reading my uh, my finger at all. Like, I couldn't use touchscreen, which an iPhone is all touchscreen. So I would have to, like, call people through Siri and stuff. 
and it was horrible. Like posting images on Instagram would take forever, but taking the case off definitely helped with that. And eventually it fell and shattered. So I went to Walmart and my wife was like, you want me to go with you? I was like, please, like, I would like the support of Walmart. And I really needed it last night because I go there. There's a lady already getting her phone serviced on. The guy turns around to me. He's like, what do you want? And I was like, I need a new iPhone and a case. And he's like, well, it's going to be a little bit. I'm like, okay, I'll wait. Waited like 15 minutes. He turns around again. He's like, oh, you still want that? I was like, yeah, I, I've been here. you know. And he's like, all right, I got to go in the back where they're locked up. And I got to call a manager back there to open them up. So it might be a little bit. I'm like, cool, take your time. I've already been here enough. He goes back there, literally 25 minutes, nothing. Literally, I thought he... He either, probably went to break. Yeah, went to break yeah, or, he, or he quit or something. <laughs> he um, quit on you. Like a manager comes back, the phone's ringing off the hook in the electronics department. No one's there. Manager comes back. He's like, where's the employee here? And I'm like, I've been waiting here for almost 40 minutes for a phone. The guy's back there probably looking for your key right now. You need to go back there. And I was like, and she's been waiting for the longest time just for a cell phone case. And uh, so he helped her before me, whatever. He's like, he's like, I'm going to go back there for the key. Or he gave a different manager a key to go back there and I was like well I need a cell phone case like while you're here can you just give me a cell phone case and he actually comped it to me for free which I was very happy about because of how long I waited for and shout out to Walmart because their customer service always sucks no matter what but for this manager to give me a $35 case for free a life proof case for an iPhone 6 I was like thank you like that was super nice of you and it made it so much better but the guy eventually came back 10 minutes later. So we were almost there for an hour. He was like, I'm so sorry it took so long. He was like, we used to have all the cell phones at this display case right next to the register, but some customer came in last week and literally ripped all the cell phones out of it and like tore it up. You know how like they have those safety wires and stuff? Yeah. And I looked at him and I was like, was that customer waiting for over 45 minutes? And he just looked at me and just starts busting out laughing and my wife is like why did you say that i'm like he's laughing i'm laughing it's funny but yeah so i got my cell phone it was 150 bucks and i'm glad i replaced it and i got a brand new case for free so that was my day yesterday dream and all solid how was your days yesterday (laughs) we've changed this podcast to being about our life instead of Video games and beer. Hey, I talked about <laughs> kiosks for a second. Now. For a split second. Yeah. Uh, it's been good. It's been crazy. Yeah. So you're uh, you're in the process of moving. Yep. Um, I got about two weeks until we're closing on our new house, and it's just been like insanity thinking about that and getting ready for it. Yeah. So. It's amazing. It's a big step in your life. Ready to, for it to be over. Yeah. <laughs> so ready (laughs) how's it feel with all your games boxed up and stuff um it's sad um because there's definitely times where i'll be like i really want to play this game but i'm also like i don't know what box it's in and i don't even want to try to guess no reason to Yeah. yeah so i've had my switch um my Game Boy Advance with the flash cart and then yep. my Xbox One to play. And You're I've been, fine. Yeah, I've been playing a lot of Borderlands 2 on Xbox, so it's oh, been cool. keeping me occupied. Good. So That's awesome. It's one of my favorite games. So I think the greatest good. thing about like moving into a new house is setting up a new game room and like changing it from what your old game room looked like into a new game room. You know, yeah. and like seeing what you need, if you need more shelving, if like when I first moved into this house, um, I had a horrible TV stand, like this small little glass stand. Eventually, I was like, "This looks horrible with like able to see all the wires and stuff." So, ended up buying a new TV stand. It looks great to me. You know, it's not the best, but definitely does a lot better than the glass stand that had no backing to it that hid the cords. Yeah, I'm excited to get it set up. It's uh... It's a basically it's a bedroom um, 
that I'm going to turn into it. So, cause we have, we'll have a guest bedroom, but then we have extra bedroom. That's um, awesome. So I'll have a separate room for it, which is going to be really nice. Cause I wanted it in our townhouse, it was in the living room. It was like, if you wanted to escape from it, you know, in a way, if you wanted to just sit down and watch a movie and just like chill in a, you know, like an ambient environment that didn't exist because there was just like video games everywhere. Yeah. Which is cool. I mean, like there's a time and place, but then if you want to just veg out and just like enjoy yourself, it's like, well, you're in this clutter. And yeah. if you want to get away from it, there was nowhere to go. Yeah. So it's going to be nice to have it in its own place. Absolutely. And um, like just spread out so I can, Um, I've been like, thinking about what I want to do, how I want to put things together and like what I want to do with the consoles and the TVs yeah. and stuff. It's there's plans in my head. And I mean, that's not even just for that room, just for like my house in general, just thinking about like furniture and where things are going to go. Mm-hmm. It's been fun. super exciting. I, so I really like it. Yeah. It's so much fun. So I'm just ready to be in there and start doing it. Cause I guarantee you I'm going to be up for like 48 hours straight, get that whole house unpacked. Cause I cannot live out of boxes. It's going to really? be, in, yeah, I can't uh, do it. I, hate it it gives me so much anxiety so i'm gonna have that thing unpacked in like three days <laughs> i think that's the way to do it you know just get it out of the way so you don't have to worry about it yeah yeah when uh we started moving in the day we were moving in kayla was uh painting the spare or the main bedroom upstairs while everyone else was moving in so she had the easier job but she's like i don't want this like salmon color wall so she painted it like this light purple color instead. So like doing that before the furniture came upstairs was like awesome and it looks great, you know. So yeah, I, I wish you the best on that. I can't wait to help you move and see the new house. You're gonna be closer to me, which is exciting. Yeah. Probably be like five minutes, ten minutes Dope. from you. It's gonna be insane. Cheers to that. Awesome. I can't wait. Yep. So I showed you guys a video game that I heard about today that came out yesterday uh, on the Switch, I believe PS4 and Xbox and PC as well. It's a crowdfunded game. It's called 1980X, but if you want to search it up, look up 198X. Um, It's a very retro-looking game that essentially is about like a female teenager that grew up in the 1980s it's a story behind her going to an arcade that had a bunch of arcade games different types of games that she fell in love with so it's a bunch of games within a game uh what did you guys think about it uh that's exactly what i thought to me it just looked like a like a series of five different retro games you kind of play yeah. I don't know if they link them together through a certain story, I would imagine. I'm sure, yeah. Like, there's a Street Fighter-looking game, but her character, like, her wearing the red hoodie in the beginning, she was fighting the character. So she is, like, embodying the persona of the main character in each video game. So there's a Street Fighter game. There was a shmup, shoot 'em up game, an old-school RPG game. A racing game and what else? Something. Else. Oh, a ninja game. Yeah, that yeah. Was it. I think it gave me. So it was kind of funny because you sent me that, and I've been listening to a lot of like retro wave synth wave music when I've mm. been driving. So it was like it started playing. I was like, oh, this is like how I drive in my car. Nice. <laughs> so, but I I like that like vibe of like that synth wave like neon kind of feel so i was automatically i was like oh this looks interesting but also kind of gave me like it felt like tron kind of yes when like it with the her being in the video game in the trailer i mean not saying that she's going on the grid or whatever but like just her being in the game yeah i think it kind of gave me the tron vibe but also like uh her saying like this was my escape to go into the video game mentally is kind of, I feel like we've all been there. Mm-hmm. It was kind of, you could relate to that. So it seemed interesting on that level too, because I guarantee you almost anybody who's listening to this has at one point in time been like, that's me in that game. Like I'm doing this. This is me. Yeah. This is not the character that I'm playing. This is me escaping from something for a little bit while I'm in my screen. That's every day for me. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's something special about that when you find a game that you really get into that much, you know? Like, you feel attached to the character and, like, emotionally, you know? Yeah. Yeah. When when Tony uh, feels like he's Tony Hawk and Tony Hawk's pro skater. He yeah. is. He is Tony Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember playing uh, Grand Theft Auto so much. I might have said this on the podcast, but I, like, walked out of my parents' house, and I'm, like, going to my car... And this car is driving by real slow towards me. And I start running after it. Like, no lie, I start running after it. And I'm like, what the hell am I doing right now? Like, I was about to pull the front door out and throw this guy out because he was driving so slow. And, like, jump into his car. That's funny. Yeah. I There's mean, that's stories like, about that. Though. Like, yeah, like, yeah, people they actually, like, do it, Kids play though. Grand Theft Auto, and then they oh, yeah, find no. a gun in their parents' house, and you yeah. rob, you know, yeah, rip someone out of that's their car. That's crazy. Not to say I wouldn't do that. I never did that. But, no, literally in my head, I was like, oh, I should go just hijack this car. Like, it didn't, like, I was still in the video game mentality that I was still playing a video game. Yeah. But that happened to me life. the other day, actually. I told you I was playing a lot of Borderlands, too. Have you ever played? borderlands no okay i was just playing it the other day because it's free uh, yeah it is free right now i actually started like replaying the series before they announced three and i was like really stoked on my timing um but it's one of my favorite series of all time and for those who haven't played it it's uh like a cell shaded uh basically you're just looting and everything is insane and it's really fun and there's a lot of quests and um, it's just like goofy in the best way yeah, possible. It's a, it's a very goofy, good looking game that still looks good today because of the cell shading. It's so good. Um, so I was playing a lot of that and I've been playing with my friends online too. And um, there's uh, different points in the game, you know, when you're you're coming upon different towns and things like that. And you're battling these enemies and... They have like you either like barrels or like explosive gas tanks that you could blow up to, you know, blow up the enemies around you kind of thing. And I swear to God, I got out of my car the other day and I saw a gas tank yeah. just like on the side of a building. And I was like, ah, wait. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like that. You're like, no, Shit. that's the rocket launcher. Huh? No, that's weird. I just like stood there for like a split second. I was like, you didn't actually think that. But yeah. I did because yeah. I. I'll go home like every night. My routine has been like, I'll get my stuff done and then I'll play like two hours, three hours of Borderlands, like at the end of my night to wind down and then go to bed. So yeah. if I'm immersing myself in that world for like three hours every night from like, I don't know, like six to nine, you know? Yep. You're yeah. Gonna and then think right before you go to bed, too, it's like <laughs> yeah. in your head and you're going to sleep. And oh, then, yeah. And then yeah. you're driving down the road and you see a, a gas tank and you're like, ah, no. Not in my video game. I had anymore. a dream earlier this week, and I forget exactly what it was, but because I was playing Xenoblade, the prequel of Xenoblade, and like how the battle system is, where you have to wait a little bit to do a special attack, and then you press that button. In the dream that I was in, I was like doing the same type of like, like format of that, where I was waiting a little bit to like do something else, and like it was pretty much like doing any day like tasks but waiting until like my power bar got up so i could do the next task and it was really weird but like i remember that part of it i just don't remember exactly what i was doing in it yeah i mean if you're playing games enough and especially right before bed you're going to dream about them yeah or take sure. it into your everyday life apparently yeah <laughs> so yeah i mean 1980x i'm down for i sort of want to wait and see if there's a physical release for it but that's my game of the week that i'm looking forward to playing eventually i feel like it's going to be a short game it looks like a short game unless each game like you play like one level of and then you go to the shmup and you play one level of that then you go to the rpg play one level of that then it's storyline then you go back to the games and play more of them like maybe it's a long game but like to me it it looks more like a six hour game, 10 hour game. Yeah. I right now. Probably about that too. That's what it looks like. But it looks cool. Yeah. I'm excited. Thanks for showing me that. It looks good. Yeah. No problem. Did you like it, Tony? 
Yeah, I mean, it's interesting to me, but like I said, it just seems like a bundle of retro games, yeah. almost. Yeah. So probably line. not. Yeah, not my style, really. Yeah. So we're doing something special this weekend. That's right. We're going to too many games. Too many games. If you didn't have enough, there's too many. Too many with two O's. <laughs> so I went there for the first time last year. Kelly, how many times have you been there? I was trying to think on that. I think this is either like my fourth or fifth year going. Wow. I've been going for a little bit. And have you been to other gaming conventions? Um, not really. Nothing as big as that. Okay. Um, I don't think I've, I mean, like I wouldn't consider anything that I've been to like a gaming convention. I think that's about it. I I have thought of going to some of the other ones that are kind of close to us, but my schedules never never really lined up with like the travel yeah. time and everything with them. So this is the closest one and the easiest for us to get to. So I make it a point to go every year. Yeah, and I heard there's one at the same place in September as well, a different one, retro something. Retrocon, yeah, or something like that. Yeah, I again I've heard of that one. But I haven't been to that one. I think that one's more... I mean, it is focused on video games. I know there's a lot of video games, but I think there's also more like vintage toys and okay. things like that, too, that people collect. So it's not just video games, but okay. I do know there are a lot of the same vendors that go. Yeah, I'm sure. So so what do they have at too many games? Just a couple games. Yeah, I yeah. mean, like, what what would I expect <laughs> to see? Like four games Yeah, at Yeah, at, at least four spread out nicely. Like actually spread out real wide this, actually i think of this a lot and this is not something you would expect but this just made me think of it when you said four games spread out on a table last year when we were there i don't know if you remember this but there was just like somebody's vendor table and it was like an empty booth i don't know if like somebody just didn't show or they had an empty booth set up like whatever but it was just a white fold-out table and on it was a sega genesis like a like a model one sega genesis and then i think it was like track and field like an nes cart just sticking into the top of it and that was it on the table and i was just like i don't know why but this just like really struck me like who left this genesis here with yeah. no cables no controllers just the system and then who stuck an yeah. nes game on the top of it and just left it there and everybody was just like walking by like it was nothing and i was like this is so weird yeah I don't know if you saw that. No, I didn't. That's super funny. That, I think I took a picture of it last year. I'd have to look. But it was just like, that just resonated with me. And when you were like, it's just four games on a table. I was like, no, but it actually is just a Sega Genesis with an NES game at yeah, the top. <laughs> that's great. So. So what should you expect, Tony? Yep. Is what you're asking? Yeah, correct. Overwhelming uh, amount of nerds, video games, cosplayers arcade machines tournaments uh just video games galore man insane amount of video games and people huddled over tables looking at video games like so much that unless you know what you want you're not going to get anything yeah that Do, you want. they have like every system there yeah i i, I don't know if they have newer stuff everything. I mean, people do. They? do. they will. Um, Limited Run was there last year. They're, yeah, they're yeah. usually there. Um, basically, what it... It's just like... I remember the first time I went, and I was just like, this is so much to take in. As a human being, there was so much noise, so much light, so many things happening around you. So much. In close proximity, I was just like, holy crap. So there was just like a lot. And then once you get your handle on yourself and you're like okay let's go walk it's just like row after row after row of vendors with games and collectibles and a lot of it is like okay yeah they've got like 10 copies of super mario 3 but then there's also the person over here that has little samson like and then you walk over to the next table and you know i they're selling anime plushies you know it's like the weirdest or like pokemon cards or yeah. dice for dungeons and dragons it's a weird like collaboration of people who come there because it's not just retro gamers and it's not just modern gamers but it's a little bit of everything and it's not just gamers it's tabletop nerds. and yeah 
and card games and all that stuff. People are coming in from all walks of life. So. You know what I should start bringing there to sell? No. Deodorant. Yeah, I was going to say that it's also kind of... Stinky. Prepare for that. Yeah. Um, I But... Tony hates that. I do have to He's say, like... No, like no. As somebody who is really conscious about, like, making sure that they're okay smelling, yeah, it gets hot in there. It does. And if you are not properly equipped, I could see how things could go south real fast. Yeah. So, so I mean... definitely shorts and a t-shirt? Absolutely. I would... But yeah. you gotta wear your Precisely hoodie. Okay. I can't... I'm not wearing a hoodie. I'll yeah. wear gym shorts. Yeah, I'll wear a Precisely hoodie. And, and definitely wear sneakers, because you're gonna do a lot of walking. Yeah. But... It's um, no flip flops. I'm not wearing and, flops. And yeah, people might step on your feet too, because they're walking. They don't know where they're going. No, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of things to see. It is overwhelming at first, but like once you like get to see everything first glance, and you're like you go through the tables, just quick glance, say hi, blah blah blah, and then you're like, all right, let me let me go to the arcade let me go play some games like they have games from japan like these short little arcade machines that you sit down on and they're like shoot 'em up games or yeah, like, like ddr yeah and... fighter games whatever they had a super smash tournament last year for the gamecube which was like a hundred different tvs going on it was insane yeah it was crazy and, then and they had a big screen for like the winners of everything they would play that then they had a bunch of uh, retro games set up too around. They had a bunch of CRTs with just like N sixty fours and they have, have a Atari's band and stuff plugged going in going all the time that will be playing like retro themed songs into their type of music, like metal to pop to whatever, but like retro themed. And they got panels with all the YouTubers and stuff that are there. Yeah. Um and then there's a whole other section that I really like going to check out is like the people who are creating new indie games. Yes. And super fun. It's really cool. Cause they'll have their stuff there. You can test out and you can just like check out whatever's coming up in the market, like, or buy their copies there. Like lemon and run was back in that section. Um, there was one that I played a game that was really cool. I think that it was monster cat or not monster. Was it something like something that? Like monster that, yeah. something or something. I don't know. But there, it was like it was like zombies ate my neighbors kind of. But then they had like coffee. I don't remember. It was really cool. But it was like a Genesis clone game. Yeah. I don't. I cannot remember what any of it was called. It was a year ago. But so forgive me. What's really great about playing games from the developers that are there is that there's usually not a line. You know, these developers are hungry for people to test out their games and give them feedback, just like we're hungry for people to listen to our podcast and give us feedback on what they want or like what they liked or what they didn't like about it. They're ready to listen to us, you know? So I would love to try out those games, like all of them and talk about them, you know, for the next podcast or whatever, and just highlight the ones that we really liked. And we just won't talk about the ones that we didn't care for, you know, but uh, yeah, I'm excited for you to, for you to be there you know yeah i think it'll be a good time definitely yeah. interesting i've never been to anything like it and uh, so i guess i'm looking forward to it as a new experience yeah. so it's similar like we would go to music festivals like hippie music festivals so it's similar to that but it's inside there's no drugs going on that i know of surely there's <laughs> drugs going on <laughs> Everybody knows I don't. A lot of people do I don't, drugs. Yeah, but I don't. It's I don't think open. like inside, like while they're walking through yeah. the tables. Oh, I yeah. think is what he's talking yeah. about. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Instead of the tables being filled with like tie dyes and and rocks and gemstones, they're filled with video game cartridges and CDs. You know, but it's pretty much the same ideal where people are just trying to hustle their wares. Like, what what do you plan on bringing down there, Kelly? Like, are you bringing games to trade or anything? I was thinking about that. Um, so my plan is that I'm going down on Saturday uh, morning with my friend from high school who I've been going with for the past couple of years. He's like my first 
collecting friend. Is that Cody? Yeah, Cody, shout out to you. you ask him about the Wii U key? Yeah, Cody, if you're listening. Cody, <laughs> the- get me a Wii U key, please. <laughs> I'll ask him again. Um, but yeah, he, he and I are going to go on Saturday because we usually go together. And uh, I've got the time, so I can go two days. Yeah. So I think I'm going to do that and kind of scope it out, get the vibe, and see what's going on, give you the lowdown of what yeah, I see. Yeah, let me know if there's any, like, small kiosks there yeah. for sale. Um, Probably not. They don't usually bring Dude, kiosks. I pass, I pass on this $500 Game Boy Color kiosk on eBay the other day just because money's been tight, and I'm just like, uh, uh. like, I want it. I don't. It lit up. It was uh, nice. It wasn't like your traditional one where the light goes over it. It was like a square box where Game Boy Color was on the side, but it lit up, and then the Game Boy Color was inside. So there was like no way to like play it inside because your hands wouldn't fit in it. It was more like a display piece, and the Game Boy Color was like the not atomic purple, but like just like the solid purple, but it had the sticker like display only. So it was just powered on to like play games and whatnot, and held there by Velcro. Because I feel like you the send last... me this. Because you you're in the process of buying a house. I and know, but I'd want to save see money it too. Yes, but I want to see it. I offered the guy four hundred, and I was like, he had it up for eight hundred, and mm. uh, he was like, I, uh, like I wrote him like a nice message, which I was like, hey, I'll buy it for this. I don't really want to go any higher. He's like, I've had higher offers, so no thanks, but thank you. And I just let it go. I was like, cool. I don't want to push it. I don't need to spend more than that on something that will just be up on display. You know, I won't use yeah. it at all. No, that's fair. I get that. But then I got a notification like two days later that it sold for 500 I was like, fuck, it was only $100 more. <laughs> could have had it. Yeah, yeah. could have had it. Almost oh. had it. But yeah, um, so I'm going to go Saturday. So if anybody there... On Saturday, wants to say what's up, which is tomorrow or yeah. today, depending on whenever this comes out. I don't know. Yeah, it'll come out tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go probably look around. Like I like you said, I'm not really spending money right now. So, I mean, I usually go with a wish list because that's like the thing to do. If you've never been to a video gaming convention or if you've never been to this one specifically, the biggest thing I can suggest is go through your collection figure out what your like top 10 things you want for like whatever you collect is yeah. and top 10 things that are not easy like i don't want you to be like all right i'm getting 10 madden games like well no i don't think anyone <laughs> no nobody's going to like, oh, i need every football game but ever. i'm Someone. i'm saying <laughs> somebody nah, out there there is that one person uh, is. um but madden like collector 99 is his instagram <laughs> 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 shout out to you yeah um it's probably an instagram handle <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i mean like take 10 things that you think that you're not gonna come by anytime soon and go with that and like just look for those 10 things and maybe you'll find five maybe you'll find two maybe you'll find all 10 and like try to you know you're you're in the spot where these vendors brought product yeah and Friday, they're going to come in with it. Saturday, they're going to have the biggest influx of people. Everybody wants to come on a Saturday. That's yep. your middle of your weekend. You know, you got Friday night, Super Saturday, busy. everybody just flows in. So you've got a high volume of people on Saturday. Then Sunday, the vendors want out and they want out quick and they don't want to take all the stuff they brought in. So Sunday's the days to make your offer. So if you're going on a Sunday, take that list, see what they have and be like, hey, man, would you do X on this? Yeah. And chances are you're going to have a better chance of getting as as a better deal. A good, good offer. Yeah, don't be it, a yeah. jerk. But, you know, be they're still, you know, this is their business still. They're yeah. still trying to make money. You know, they paid to be there. They paid to travel there. A lot of these people are coming from out of state, um, yeah. coming into this convention. And I don't think it's cheap to get a table. No. Um, and then they also have a brick and mortar store, which they're paying rent on usually yeah. a lot of these people. So you got to, you know, don't. Don't be a jerk to people who are trying to. Don't price them. Yeah. Yeah. But usually they'll cut you a good deal. Yep. And, um, but yeah, just don't go in and just start buying stuff because all of a sudden you're going to be 10 tables deep and your backpack's full or like whatever. Like also come with a backpack. Yeah. Um, but like. Same with you, Tony. Come with a backpack. Come with a backpack. And also, also bring your snacks. 
Waters okay. and snacks. Yeah. Bring your Switch, because last year we had a lot of fun. We sat yeah. down and played Mario Kart. We did a local LAN party and played Mario Tennis and Mario Kart. Yeah. 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 Like, all at, like, a table in the food area. And it was so much fun. That we was had, so like, fun. It was, like, four of us. Yeah, four of us I on three it. Switches, and it was just so great. Yeah, it was, it was so good, cool. like, a good little... And they have space so you could just sit down and chill. And, like, yeah. that's a really cool thing is, like, yeah, you can be up and you can be in the arcade. You could be watching the tournaments. You, you can, can be watching the, too. the vans and you can be, like, shopping, but you can chill. You know, there's space for you to go and just chill out. And, like, if you're a trading card game player, they have places you can play. If you're a tabletop gamer, you have places you can play there. Like, it's set up so that it's friendly to you being a gamer as well as somebody who's there to spend money and like, you know, buy stuff and enjoy the experience, I guess. So Kelly, what did you pick up last year at Too Many Games? Like, what was on your list that you got? I got the Klonoa games last year. Yeah. So you were looking for Klonoa. I was looking for Klonoa too. We're both on the Klonoa hype, and mm. uh, I think I was just looking for the Game Boy Advance games. At the time, I wasn't looking for the PS1. I don't have the PS1. And I also don't know if I ever really want to spend the money for the PS1 <laughs> version Yeah, of and it. you had the PS2 already, and I still needed that one. And did yeah. you have the Wii one? Uh, maybe not did. at the time. Maybe I did. I think you did, because yeah. I remember you sent, like, you used to oh, I think I got you send it me right the eBay before. listing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I got, I ended up getting the PS2... Uh, I think the Wii version as well, and then one of the Game Boy Advance copies. But you got it in box, right? Or no? No, I got that oh, one okay. loose. And if I see it this year in box, I'm buying it. Yeah, me too. Um, I'll fight you for it. Uh, well, I'm sure you'll find it before me, <laughs> since you're going to be there Saturday. <laughs> um, so I'll fight you mentally for it. Yeah. Um, that's cool. Just send me a picture once you got it. But yeah, I got the second Game Boy Advance game in box but i got it through ebay after because i couldn't find it there and that was kind of like the thing was whatever i don't find on my wish list okay it's time to go to ebay if i don't see it here because i hate buying games on ebay it was like if i don't see it here i'm gonna buy it there then because i i can't find it yeah i agree (laughs) so that's what i got last year i think that was pretty much it what'd you get i got like right when i got there like one of the first stands I looked at, and we got there Saturday, so I was surprised to see this, but I found an inbox CIB of Pokemon Silver for 55 to 60 bucks, somewhere around there. I think I spent 60 bucks, like non taxed or whatever, and super happy about that. I was like, yeah, like this is a $90 game all day, you know, in the condition that it is. So I bought that right away. I uh, found a guy that was selling just like boxes of games. Like he didn't have that many games, but he had a bunch of loose boxes. And I got Secret of, not Secret of Mana, but the Game Boy Advance version of Secret of Mana. Something of Mana. Um, I got the box for that, which was dope for 10 bucks. I bought a Halo Edition Xbox. Almost bought a Game Boy Advance kiosk, which was too much. But I talked the guy down a lot, and then I still walked away from it. I was like, nah, I can't do it. He, like, wanted 800 lowest amount. I was like, nah, I can't do it. Um, What else did I get? Oh, I got... I was looking for Wonder Swan games. Remember that? I was yeah. like, who has Wonder Swan? What's Wonder Swan? Uh, it's a portable system made by the guy that helped make the original Game Boy. But then he branched off and made his own system called the Wonder Swan, which was only in, like, Korea and Japan. Oh, okay. So, hardly any of the games are in English. But some of them are in English, or some of them you can just play without knowing any, uh, knowing any English. Because it's like a Tetris game, you know? Okay. Like a puzzle game. So I got Clock Tower from that, and I've actually never played it. Still, it's on my shelf right now. I'm, like, scared to play Clock Tower. is such a scary game. There was another game that was next to it, I think. It was like a baseball game. No, no, no. When when you were buying Clock Tower, 
pretty sure there was another game next to it and it was like some sort of vegetable based game and i was like egging oh, you yeah. on to get it did you get it or not I for don't the atari Lynx. yeah yeah what was that uh like vegetable fighter or something I don't, it was something no it was like there was like a definite like vegetable pun in the name i was like yeah. this is amazing please get it and he didn't get it I yeah think. i didn't get it but i think i already own it that's a, oh that's, that's why one of the reasons why i didn't <laughs> get it yeah uh, but yeah, I remember. I remember you looking for Wonder Swan. If yeah. anybody has a Wonder Swan, I would buy one. I would be. That would be like one of the things that if I yeah. saw it, I would buy it tomorrow. It's a dope system. It's. I want one. It, it's that a system cool. that I keep in my truck, always with Klonoa in it. That's why. I, that's one I need. And so uh, I need to get that. I haven't touched it in months, but it takes one double A battery, and that's it. And it. I mean, it's on for 24 hours of gameplay, like, constantly. Like, I haven't changed the battery in the longest time. I should probably check it to make sure that it's not, like, corroding. Yeah. But besides that, like, yeah, it's an amazing little system. But, yeah, um, I also bought Tokyo Extreme Racer, the original one for Dreamcast. Oh, uh, was... you know, we, we didn't talk about that we got it. We both got it. What? We got Drum Master for oh, PS2. Yeah. Taika ne- Drum Master. Neither of us have opened it yeah. and played it yet. <laughs> this big old box for 50 bucks, which is a good deal. It's I mean, sealed, yeah. Yeah, you can like find like an unsealed one nowadays uh, on eBay for 50 bucks. But, so, uh, yeah. No, I want to play it. I want to play it. I was just waiting until I had space to do it. My because... only PS2 right now, after I traded like eight of them to JBAM, I... The only one that I have left is the one in my kiosk. Mm. So I would literally have to, like, put a table next to it to play it. (laughs) Did I tell you my first player controller on the PS2 kiosk broke, too? Like, the second player controller? Dude. Snapped off. I need to find someone with a 3D printer. So if you have a 3D printer and you want to print me arms for a PlayStation kiosk, let me know. Hit me up. Or if you just want to print regular human arms, hit him up. That would probably How work cool too. would that be if you had like a human arm come out and hold the controller? <laughs> Hell yeah. That 3D oh, printed. Dude, yes. that would actually be super cool. All right, cool. so yeah. anybody like who wants to 3D print yeah. arms, yes, like, just coming right off arms. of it. Yeah. I love that idea. Just like those, it would be like that finger just hands holds it. Yeah. for your yeah. kiosk. That's what it would be like. Those little finger hands yeah. for your yeah. kiosk. I would love that. Uh, Such should, a good idea. We should find somebody who's a 3D printer. Tony, just buy a 3D printer right Tony. now. Tony. Yeah. Get Order on eBay. Right do I don't it. have get 3D on, printer kind of money. Get on Amazon. Near to, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're we're going to be handing out stickers at Too Many Games. What will your guys' pitch be to potential listeners and like just handing out stickers? What are you going to say about precisely? Probably something smooth. Just be like, precisely. It's a podcast. <laughs> Leave them wanting more, you know? <laughs> They're going to be yeah. intrigued. Oh, what is this? I'm so disappointed. Maybe I should check it out. I know. He had that, like... I like he it, He had that grin on his face, too, and that's what really sold it. You can't hear it. You can't hear the grin. <laughs> but if you're in the room, you can see yeah. the grin. Insert grin. No, no it I, really I, works. All right. It brings I think it that, together. I think that can work here and there. Yeah, I was just we gotta, joking. Yeah, no, we got to name, like, five different pictures. No, I think that would work for, like, a girl that you're, like, attracted to, like, some, like, cosplayer in, like, a Bowser suit, and you're, like, Bowser precisely. It. No, just Bowser. Who <laughs> likes Bowser? Sexy Bowser. Who likes Bowser? You do. When did I say that? <laughs> I'm saying it. Just yeah, like, you know what really gets me going? A big fucking turtle. It's a spiky show. This took a turn. Yeah, I did. <laughs> All right. All right, what's yours? I'm like, hey, you like video games? And they're like, yeah, no shit, dumbass. <laughs> no. They're like, whoa, get the fuck away from me, crazy guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just tap him on the shoulder. And then I'll, like, hide to the other shoulder and then tap him on that shoulder and then go back to the other shoulder. Are you in middle school? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then once they catch me, I'll be like, oh my goodness, you must like video games. Here's a fucking sticker. Put it on your forehead and listen to Precisely Podcast. And then just smack the sticker on their forehead. <laughs> <laughs> this oh, is horrible. 
horrible. All right, what's a nice way to say it, Kyler? Um, my sticker pickup line, or if you want to shorten it, my stick up would be. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Listen, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Give me our fucking games. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> but here's thought, the sticker. I, that would be so I thought funny you wanted you a that. listener. I didn't think you wanted to scare everybody out of there. Yeah, oh, I'm, shit, pretty sh- I'm pretty sure I broke everyone's eardrums that are Yikes. listening to All this. All right, you just headphones. lost Sorry. about seven listeners right there. Hopefully we gain 100 during too many games. But yeah. Well, I was just going to approach them with a sticker. Get on your and fucking knees. <laughs> just say, you obviously like video games. Do you like beer? Do you like listening to people talk in your ears? Here, have a sticker and listen. I don't like it. I don't like yeah, it. Yeah, I don't think the way to do it, though, is go up and just randomly talk to people. You know, it's something no. that, like, no. oh, you're next to someone would, you're talking to. Them. I would honestly just have a sticker in your hand while walking yes, towards someone. that's exactly what I was going to do. I was just going to hold a sticker out and, and say, anybody can take hey, it. do you want a sticker? And they say, yeah, What? what's this? Oh, we do a podcast, a weekly podcast about video games while we're drinking beer. Listen to it. It's called Precisely. You should put a little dispenser on your backpack mm-hmm. and make a sign that says Precisely Podcast. Take one. Please please take one. Yeah. No, my hand's Such going, a good idea. My right? hand's going to be the dispenser. Yeah, but if you had a little thing on the back of your backpack, people Just, would walk up. Then I'll lose all my stickers. No. All right. I don't know. Pessimist bow over here. Okay. No, I think the other way to approach it then also is there's a lot of people there that you'll see you have something in common with. They're wearing a Mario shirt. They're in some cosplay. They have cool shoes. I don't know. Like whatever they're wearing, be like, oh, hey, oh, you, you like, like that thing? You like sweatpants. You, <laughs> <laughs> you missed that whole conversation. <laughs> That's the newest uh, form of merch, by the way. Oh, you like bifocals? Oh, me too. Oh, you like you like being stinky and not wearing deodorant? Here's a fucking sticker. Oh, dude, you know what we should have done? We're into the same things. Just- <laughs> you know what you should have done? What? You should have bought like travel sizes of Old Spice and slapped the sticker on. Just started handing them out. I think that's so rude. <laughs> but I love it. <laughs> I'm a rude motherfucker. But it does get hot in there. I will give them that. Even if you put a it lot of deodorant on. Get, put extra. Put extra. I cannot stress bring, it enough. Bring deodorant. With you. Or I a little al- bit of Axe. I Something. Al- I always... No. Axe is so 90s. I well, always... We're in middle school, though, because you're tapping people on the shoulder. Axe is 90s, but it's for... It's 2000s, then, I guess. I don't yeah. know. It's, it's middle school. That's what it is. It's like a flamethrower if you have a lighter. You should not be putting that under your armpit. Whatever. So, whatever you dudes use... Just spray a little of it on. Spray something. A little extra. Yeah. Chanel number five. Sure, yeah, that. Yeah. That's what it is. Calvin Klein 058721. You made that up? Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, that hurts his phone number. <laughs> Social security card. <laughs> half of it. <laughs> Which half? Uh, <laughs> just kidding. The fourth. The fourth half. <laughs> No, I, I just want to approach everyone that I see. Honestly, I'm I'm just going to go super hard at it and and be like, hey, would you like a sticker? And if they ask me, sure, what is this? It's a podcast that I do that's about video gaming, and we also review a beer. You know, not necessarily that it's a beer and video game podcast because I feel like some people don't drink. You know, like we we talk about video games and we usually drink beer while doing it you know yeah and it, it's or or it's just a video game podcast and people can listen to themselves like and subscribe yeah it's it, it's cool because um not only i mean like i it's not that i go to this and never talk to anybody ever but it's, this gives you a but this to... no that no it it gives i think what I'm getting at is like before when I would go wait in a line or I'd be walking down or you see somebody who has something or that cosplay that's really cool. You talk to them. Yeah. Like it doesn't really, you're all there for the same reason. Yeah. So you have that commonality. So conversation is, is easier to come by. Yeah. So now it just gives me another level to meet somebody at. 
Um, like Absolutely. before it was just like, oh yeah, we're standing in line for whatever this is and we're standing here and we've got 10 minutes to kill and you're also wearing a Mario shirt or, you know, like yeah. whatever. Or, you know, like but, I've run into so many people from the gram on there. Yeah. Like, and same. And like, I saw a bunch of people crazy. last year that I knew from the gram that I didn't go up and say hi to because I was like nervous to, for some reason I was just like. I don't know why I was, because, like, I'm a very outgoing person, but I was just like, I don't know them well enough because I don't know them personally, so I felt, like, awkward to say, hey, I follow you on Instagram and so do so do you back, you know, but this time around, I'm going to say hi to everyone, like, people yeah. I follow, people I don't follow. I hope to get a lot more followers through this. And I, I had people come up people. to me last year and the year before. And, like, say my Instagram handle at me. And I was like, who are you? Did they say it the proper way? <laughs> no. Nobody says it that way except for you. Damn. <laughs> nobody ever thought it was anything else but wow. highway to kill except for you. Yeah. But it was just, like, it was shocking to me because I was like, what? Do It wasn't like, do I know you in a bad way? It was like, do I know you? Like, am I, do I, do I know you? Like, yeah. am I supposed to know you? Because I legitimately didn't. But then that yeah. day, like... I met somebody new and followed them because I just like, I can't keep track of this shit. Like, yeah. you know, like I followed them back or whatever. Absolutely. And like, now you've got that relationship that you met them in person and yeah. like they knew who you were. So just approaching them sometimes it's just like, it's not to be nervous about, but it's kind of opening up that door for yeah. you guys to actually, cause Me. maybe, maybe you're following them, but they aren't following you because they don't know. I don't, you know, like yeah. it happens. Like, so you can make it a two-way relationship now. So maybe get on Instagram, Tony. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to take a break from social media. Wow. <laughs> Great thing to do being a, a podcast uh, influencer like yourself. Yeah, I mean, I'm just doing it for myself. So Post a picture of that Nintendo 3DS that I gave you. Okay. With the game that you've been playing. Is it Mighty Max still or what? No, I haven't really been playing much. I've been super busy this week. Yeah. Put any game on there. Post it up. Hashtag a bunch. I'm sure you'll get 50 more followers. All right. All right. Influencer Tony, everybody. I'm trying to help you, man. If you got if you got people liking your photos, you'll be more about Instagram. I feel like. Yeah, I believe it. This is his only his secondary page. He's Tony Hawk. Like, he, is. he has his own Instagram. <laughs> He's fame. at Tony Hawk Pro Skater too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, with that, I'm excited for too many games. I'm excited to see everyone there Sunday. I hope you're listening to this and you see us there. Yeah. Um. If you don't know about it, I have the information pulled up so we can share it. Sure. Um. Too Many Games is in uh, Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, which is uh, just right outside of Philly. I thought it, it was Oak, Pennsylvania. Well, technically, it's, like the same thing. it's just like the same thing. Okay. But the actual address that I'm looking at right now says Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. Um, so it's like right outside of Philly. So if you're close-ish to the eastern side of Pennsylvania, come on over. Um, Saturday, it's open 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And Sunday is 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. I know Saturday they usually do, like, concerts and stuff later, I think. Um, I don't know if you have to have certain tickets for that or what, but I think they do do some later stuff on Saturday night um, if you're into that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's an after party somewhere at, yeah. like, a barcade. Yeah, I don't know if you have to have tickets for it, but... Um, I don't think you do. I think you can just show up. That's cool. Um, So I'm getting my hair cut tomorrow. And you know how I got lines, brah, last time? Yeah, what are you going to get? That's what I wanted to ask you guys. I'm thinking about, the, like, did you see my lines? Did you see my story where I had the lines cut mm -hmm. in the fade? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about getting something gaming related hmm. in my fade. What should I get? Uh, what's a, the Triforce? What's it called from A Legend of Zelda? Yeah. Damn, why can't I remember yeah. this fucking thing? Ooh, the Triforce would be That's dope. what it is, right? Yeah. Uh. A little triangle, yeah. 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 The three tri three, tri three or four. Yeah. Three. I guess it's three on the outside so, and then yeah, it makes yeah, one yeah, in the yeah, center. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. Four, with four, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Dude, that's actually probably the best thing I've heard. 
There you go. Uh, Kelly, what do you think? <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't mean to burp. Uh, um, <laughs> he actually came out with a good one. I was going to say, like, get the shitty Sonic remake faded in here. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Like the fucked up Sonic? Yeah, yeah. yeah no. Dude, get a uh, Weston Loathing character. Yeah. No, I can't get a stick figure on me. Nobody will notice, uh, like, be funny know what it's from. They'll yeah, be like, just no. put uh, W-O-L. Yeah, they still yeah. won't know. They won't know. Nobody will know. No. Only 3,000 people will know that own that fucking copy. Maybe all 3,000 will be there. You never yeah, know. Doubtful. Yeah, mm-hmm. dude, Triforce. Yeah. But also, or a fucking mushroom from... No, no, not that. I don't like that. No, my uh, yeah, it could look like a Ruthie, one of the employees at work. She was like, "Why not Pac Man with the little dots going around your head?" Yeah, Yeah. that's a good one. That'd be cool. I'd rather have a Triforce though, because you could rock that. And then I was like, Mm -hmm. "What about Tetris blocks?" But I think that'd be too hard to like show like what they are. Yeah, because you'd have to do probably a few of them. Yeah, you'd have to do a couple. A Triforce would be dope. You could do that and just be done with it. Do you think a tri- that would be easy to cut in? Do you think a Triforce would like look proper though after it grows in? Yeah. Yeah, or just get a haircut in a week or two, and it'll blend in. Okay, I'll do that. I'm gonna do a Triforce. You could do. I mean, you could do. A question mark block was the only other thing I could like think of. That would be a good one. That'd be but cool. I like the Triforce, but be- Triforce better because it's like, it's just a, like it's just a triangle. Yeah. You know, within triangles. That's probably one of the most powerful video game shapes ever. Yeah. I agree with you on that. Yeah. Like, I, it's iconic. Yeah, I think I think that'll be good. And it, that's very you as well. Yeah. And you just finished up Zelda, so I feel like you deserve that. I did. Tony didn't. That's right. I did not finish it. So you don't get a Triforce. I you. think this is why Tony, yeah. like, he has PTSD on video games because of uh, Link to the Past. Is this true? No. Like, like you don't want to play any like video games again because you're just like Link to the Past beat my ass. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no response besides no. No. Correct. <laughs> Kelly, have you played any games this week? Uh, just just a lot of Borderlands. Like okay. Said, just really delving deep into that i think i'm about i don't remember it's been a couple of years since i've beat it so i'm probably at a good midway section there by it now but i'm also the person who does all the side quests and collects all the crap and yeah. tries to get everything and that game there's so much to get it's yeah. it'll take forever i felt like so. the shooting just took too long like do you level up the guns where the shooting doesn't take as long um like where enemies don't have to take so many bullets i mean your enemies get harder i mean d- depending on like what you're doing yeah like if i'm playing a game with somebody who's a lower level than me obviously the enemies are a lower level but i mean the enemies will so you always can play be... campaign with other people yeah you can i i have like a couple friends that i've been playing with recently and it's just like you get to generally the same point in the game and you can join up you can party up and you're all in the same like world together otherwise like you know when you play borderlands by yourself it's just you it's not like like fallout 76 where you can play by yourself but you're also like with tons of other people on the map and they can see you and you can see them it's just you unless you want to be in a multiplayer then you can be in a multiplayer world okay where it's just you and your party that's cool so I like I never played it multiplayer when I first beat it because I was playing it on PS3 and I didn't I don't think I had PSN back then. Yeah. I think I was too broke for it. I think it was free. Was it? Online for PS3 was free. Was it back then? Yep. Well then I didn't play online because I didn't have any friends. <laughs> so either <laughs> I was too broke or didn't have any friends. I didn't have Wi Fi. <laughs> Whatever it was. Yeah. Um oh yeah, no actually that might have been yeah. That actually might have been a thing. Yeah. Um, but I remember beating it solo, both games, on the PS3. And just, like, my mind was blown because I beat the first one. And I was like, I got to buy the second one and beat the second one. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. And then I had the pre-sequel a little while later, which was good. But 
I mean, the first and the second one is just, good. it was so good. So good. I just finished up the Face McShooty mission, which is one of my favorites. I don't What's know if you about? remember that. No, I didn't play much of it at all. Oh, uh, okay. Well, Face McShooty is this guy who's just standing there. And um, I'll give you one guess as to what you should do. Shoot his face? You shoot him in the face. <laughs> And he just stands there and he goes, shoot me in the face, shoot me in the face, shoot me in the face, not the arms, not the legs, not the hips, shoot me in the face. And if you shoot him in the face, you get like this loot. But if you shoot him anywhere else, like you get, you finish the mission, but you don't get like the loot that you would if you shot him in the face. Interesting. But I just think it's just like that. kill him? Yeah. He just asks you to kill him basically by, by shooting him in the face. Yeah. It, the game is so weird, yeah. But it's the right kind of weird. Okay. Like it's it's not like a gruesome like yeah. Kill me because I want to die. It's just like that's what these uh, cyborgs or whatever psychos. Yeah. Yeah. That's what their like character is. Is that okay. they're just like in this world is just like they thrive off of pain for some reason. Or death. Yes. Yeah. So. Interesting. Yeah, it's crazy, but I love it. It's really great. And if you haven't played any of them yet, I can't recommend it enough before the third one comes out, which yeah. is going to be sweet. Yeah, I'm interested in the newest one. Um, I've been playing the prequel of Xenoblade, like I've been saying, enjoying that. But besides that, I've been playing a crap ton of Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze still because there's so much more that I didn't realize. So... On the last podcast, I was talking about unlocking the K levels, which you get the K-O-N-G. After you get all those levels and you beat those levels, which are the hardest levels I've ever played in any video game, I beat them all. Guess what happens? A whole new freaking world appears. I had no idea that would happen. But that happens. And guess what those levels are like? Purgatory of hell. Like, straight up. The hardest saying beyond hard but i beat two of them so far i haven't played the third one yet and i feel like there might only be four levels in it i'm not sure um and i feel like you almost have to collect all the collectibles in each level of them but uh yeah just been playing those randomly like just playing one after like Dying 30 times and finally beating it. Being like, okay, I'm done with this game tonight. Instead of just trying to beat it all. Trying to savor it. And especially, like, my wife wants to see me, like, play through it. Because these K-levels, like... And the after K-levels, you can't play a multiplayer anymore. Like, it has to be single player to actually get through it. Because it's too hard with two people when... You have to time every jump completely right. So you'd have to be in sync the whole time. And that's impossible with two people. So yeah, been playing a lot of Donkey Kong and going going Kong crazy, but enjoying it. It's a fun game, but I agree. It's pretty difficult. You're playing yeah. Switch version, right? Or are yeah. you playing yeah. Yeah, we're at like ninety five percent complete. Yeah, right. I've been playing that on and off since I got it and I love it, but it Have you beaten it? Like the No, because it's Again, it's like I've been trying to go through and get everything on the way, and I think I might just have to you not do that. You just got to go that. back to it, yeah. Yeah. Like, just play through the levels and then go back to it. Yeah. Like, the replayability of this game is beyond any game I've ever played. Because you'll be like, oh, wait, I don't think I've played this level, even though you know that you have. But, like, it's been so long since you've played it or whatever that it just feels new. Yeah. But... Every, like, letter that you collected, like, let's say you just need the O on that level, like, all the other letter- letters in that level will be transparent. So you're like, all right, I don't need to go for that letter. Like, I'll just wait until the O. And if you get to the end without seeing the O, you're like, all right, I skipped it. I got to restart the level, you know, until I find the O again. So, yeah, I mean, the re- replayability of it is amazing, I've played each level probably 10 times and probably will play them 10 more to find all the puzzle pieces too, because I don't know what all the puzzle pieces give you either. Like, um, isn't there like 
if you go into your menu, there's like you get the figures and it, don't you collect the puzzle pieces to get? Doesn't it make know. something at the end of each world? I don't remember. I, I don't know. I have no idea. I haven't looked. I haven't looked. I haven't played. That's for a one bit. thing we haven't done yet either. So okay. gotta do that still. Takes. Yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> you play anything, Tony? No, we literally just talked about this. Oh, okay, sorry, <laughs> my bad. Just he's taking it, a. He's taking a break. Just if you played anything within the time he's that taking I've a break from social media yeah. and video games. Yeah, just making sure. Either way, this is a good podcast. Thank you, Kelly, for coming on. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the invite again. Absolutely, it's fun. We'd love to have you on more. Yeah, I'm excited to go hang out with you this weekend. See everybody at Too Many Games. Oh yeah. Have a good time. Me too. So you can follow us at Precisely Podcast on Instagram. We do have a Patreon up right now at patreon.com slash precisely. You can follow Kelly at Highway to to Kel. Not Highway to Kel. (laughs) It's one L. You can follow me at. It's two L's. Oh, is it? All right. My bad. Don't listen to him. All right. You can follow Bo at Bo's underscore game room and Tony at precisely underscore Tony. We do have shirts and swag and hoodies still up on our eBay. Just search precisely podcast on that. If you have any comments, concerns, topics that you want us to discuss, email us at precisely pod at outlook.com or just DM us on our Instagram at precisely podcast. We out. We out.